Good morning, church. I uh, repeat what was said earlier. Welcome to our many guests. Also, welcome to our many regulars. It's good to be together as a church family today. And uh, we have a uh, one especially honorable guest this morning, a former preacher from Lancaster, one of the preachers from, believe it or not, 50 years ago, from the 60s and 70s, is with us this morning, Brother Garnet Baker. And if you were trying to come in the, uh, the main door there this morning as worship was, was getting ready to start and there was a traffic jam, uh, he was the cause of that, people wanting to greet Garnet. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's great to have him with us, and uh, I know uh, he is special to a lot of people. As an amateur historian, one of the things I did when I moved here four years ago was try and find out everything I could about the congregation, and uh, one of the ways I did that was I read your old bulletins. Uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, many of the old bulletins are in bound volumes. Uh, they're actually in my study, if you ever want to see them, they're blue bound volumes, read through those, and then I also found different things. I found uh, little booklets that, that sort of look like this, and they are actually baptismal records. So in the old days, um, certificates were filled out when folks were baptized and some information was recorded, and you would tear that off and, and the, the person who had been baptized would get their certificate, but there was a a record book, a reminder left. And as I looked through that, so many times the name I saw as the minister baptizing folks was Garnet Baker. And so throughout this little book that I've got, his name is, is, is written several times. I don't even know if he remembers that, but uh, we have those still. And he is an example, you know, we say from time to time that we uh, drink from wells that we did not dig, or we sit under the shade of trees we did not plant. Okay, so he is one of those for us, and we appreciate his life's work and the blessing he has been to this congregation through his life's work. But it's good to see all of you here. There was a, a college professor that had the mysterious habit of removing a tennis ball from his jacket as he walked into the lecture hall each morning. And he would take it, he would sit it on the quarter of the, the podium, and after giving the lecture for the day, he would uh, once again pick up the tennis ball and, and place it into his jacket pocket, and, and then he would leave the room. Well, the students never understood why he did this until one day a a student in class fell asleep during the lecture, and the professor didn't miss a word of his lecture. While he walked to the podium, he picked up the, the tennis ball and he threw it and hit the sleeping student squarely on top of the head. And then the next day, the, the professor walked into the room, reached into his jacket, and removed a baseball. And he set it on the podium, and no one ever fell asleep again <laughs> the rest of the semester. I'm just going to leave that here. <laughs> Whatever it takes, you know. But awake or asleep, we're glad you're here today, although we would prefer awake. For the next little while, I want us to uh, think about and to study about what it means to be a member of the church. Now, church membership has fallen on hard times in many ways in our day and age. People don't take it near as seriously as they did at one time. Some don't take it seriously at all. In fact, among some, it's become fashionable to make fun of the idea of being a member of the church. Some even use that 
acrostic, M-O-T-C, in a derisive way, member of the church, and become sort of a punchline to, to some would-be church comedians. And so the idea of membership has been ridiculed and disparaged and, and left unstudied many times. And, and I think all around us in the church at large, we can see the sad results of that. We can see lack of commitment. We can see lack of spiritual roots. We can see unwillingness to submit to leadership in the church. None of it is very healthy. Most of it very immature. And it's always unlike Christ. You see, the church belongs to Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. Ephesians chapter 5. So how do you think Jesus feels when people speak against his wife? How would you feel if someone spoke against your spouse? I know how I'd feel. I'd be ready to fight. Jesus died for the church. His blood bought the church. 1 Peter chapter 1. I wonder how the one who went to the cross and gave up his lifeblood, I wonder how he will confront those in the judgment day who treated the church like it was worthless or disparaged it. It's easy to forget sometimes that the church is not primarily a human institution. That's the, that, that's the error we fall into sometimes, just focusing on the, the people, the human beings who are involved. It's easy to forget that this is a divine institution. And to be a member of a divine institution, what a privilege this is. What an incredible honor. So what does it mean to be a member? As I said, uh, that whole phrase, to some, is a punchline, member of the church. The problem with that is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. To make fun of the idea of being a member of the church is to laugh at the inspired Word of God. It's not a man-made idea, the church. It is instead a God-breathed idea. I want us to take maybe a few minutes more than normal to read a bit of a lengthier passage here in 1 Corinthians 12, but I think it's really important for us all to hear the Word of God through Paul, here especially as it relates to, to church membership, and especially if we find ourselves falling into the trap at times of considering being a member of the church as a joke or as a light thing. So, I just want you to listen today to the Word of God and how clear it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul is writing to the church, 1st century Corinth, of course, originally, but now he's writing to all of us in the church in the 21st century. I want us to read beginning in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 12. And to me, this is a passage that should be read amongst the congregation, so forgive me as I get a little bit closer to you for a few minutes to hopefully encourage you to really listen to what Paul wrote by inspiration. He said, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. 
and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of, of one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think, that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts don't require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that all the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ. And individually, members of it. This is the word of God. What a powerful passage. So much there. Obviously, we can't address it all this morning, and so we're going to look at it, if the Lord wills, in future weeks. But I hope we all noticed very clearly in this passage the uh, idea of being a member of the church is a concept that we really ought to hesitate to criticize. See? We better be very cautious about taking church membership lightly because it comes from the mind of God. It's part of having the mind of Christ. And it's not just this text. I mean, we could study several passages in the New Testament this morning that reinforce this idea. We could, in the same book, go to chapter 6, 1 Corinthians 6. We could go to 1 Corinthians 10. We could go to Romans chapter 12. We could go to Ephesians chapter 4. The Bible is just very clear on this. Membership matters. The church matters. Now, I want us to take careful note, all of us, of, of two things this morning in what we read. I'm just keeping it brief because I want us to remember these two things. First, this truth, the body of Christ, that is the church, is made up of many members. All right? God said it, I didn't. It comes from Jesus not man. The church is made up of members, many members. Just like a physical body has many functioning parts, so the spiritual body of Christ, the church, has many functioning, functioning members. This is the way God designed the body, 
whether we're talking about the physical body or the spiritual one. And so if a person has a problem with that design, they need to take it up with the designer. And good luck with that. So that's where we start. The church is made up of many members. But I want you to notice also, and this is just as important really, there's the truth that we all get into the body, that is we become members of the body in the same way. That is we are baptized into the body of Christ. Look at verse 13 again. In one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. No matter who we are, we all drink of one spirit. There is a way, a way, to become a member of the body of Christ. And scripture, you know, it says it slightly differently in different passages, different places. Here it says we're all baptized into, into one body, in one spirit. Uh, we can think of other places where this is discussed. For instance, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again, John chapter three. Uh, Peter says in Acts chapter two that people are to repent and be baptized. And then at the close of that important chapter, Acts two, the text says that the Lord was adding people to the church day by day who were doing that, all right? Now some have developed the mistaken idea over time that a, per, a person can be, they can be baptized into this church or they can be baptized into that church, whatever they prefer, whatever their choice you see, but the New Testament only knows of one church, Christ's church. And it only knows of one way of entry, baptism into Christ in the Spirit. And so once again, this morning, the body of Christ today, the church, is made up of many members. As verse 14 of our passage once more reminds us, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. So there's not a focus on one individual, one human being. There is a focus on one Lord. But as, as far as the rest of us, not a focus on one person. And that's important to remember. And also, every member of the church gets into the body the same way. They are baptized into Christ's body. And so, for example, I stand before you this morning, I consider it a great privilege to do so. But I stand before you this morning and without shame or embarrassment, I tell you that I am a member of the church. And I have every reason to say that biblically. I've been a member of the church for 40 years. I don't regret it for a minute. Second, I don't regret it. I have been a member of a, a few different local manifestations of God's church over those four decades. And what I mean by that is I, you know, I've been a member of a congregation of God's church in Canton, Ohio, where I grew up, and then in Memphis, Tennessee, for, I, for where I lived for a couple of years, and then for many years in, in Vienna, West Virginia, and now for these last few years here in Lancaster, Ohio. I think that is exactly what I should have done and exactly what I should continue to do. I think it's what God wants me to do. And I want to do as best I can what God wants me to do. Because I know this, one day I'm going to stand before God and give an account of what I have done with what he said. 
So let me ask you a question as we wrap up this morning. I just want you to ponder this. Maybe over this week, before we come together again on the Lord's Day, if we're so blessed. Here's the question. Is it possible that part of the problem with the church, let's say in America today, has nothing to do with our living in an increasingly secular culture, has nothing to do with our godless politics, and actually really has nothing to do with the hypocritical Christians that are often blamed for the weakness. Is it possible that a big part of the problem that the church is often weak is that many church attenders have lost the biblical understanding of what it means to be a member of the body of Christ. And so, we attenders, we expect when we attend to be served and to be fed and to be cared for. And if that doesn't happen to our satisfaction, we drift. That's an attender. Members, biblical members, understand that God has placed us in His church to serve. To feed others. And to care for others. Churches suffer when members forget or never learn what it means to be part of Christ's body. I, I just call on each one of us, and I hope you understand when I say I, I'm speaking for the Lord. This isn't about me. If it's just about me, forget it. But I call on each one of us individually to consider what it means to be a member of God's church. And to think about it together from these passages. We're going to study again from this chapter. 1 Corinthians 12. Then we're going to study from 1 Corinthians 13 and then from 1 Corinthians 14 in this small series of lessons, I ask you to consider God's words with me. Shall we pray? Holy God, thank you for the privilege of being part of a divine institution, your son's bride, which was bought at a great cost. Help us to not take it lightly. Help us to serve feed and, and build one another up and, and any that you see fit to send our way and help us to be true salt and light in the community here, here where you have placed us. Thank you for your love and your mercy, your patience with us. Help us not to take advantage of that, but to become what you've called us to be in Christ. And we pray in his name together. Amen. Thank you for listening this morning. We're going to sing again. The invitation is yours. If you need to come asking for prayers or, or some other need that you might have spiritually this morning, maybe even to become a part of Christ's body, you're invited now to come while we stand, while we sing.